Hey, just a quick break in this video to tell you to go to sermondownloads.net. The link is in the description section of this video. Download six different sermon packages or pass these on as a gift to Bible study teachers, preachers, pastors, deacons, whoever it is. We buy books, we buy devotionals, right? We buy all of this Christian literature, Sunday school lesson books. I'm asking you to take the next step and support sermondownloads.net. They're down in the description section of this video. Click on the link. So be it. Hey, let me pray for us. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you again, Lord, for gathering, Lord, in this place. Father, I just thank you, uh, Lord, for the opportunity, Lord, to, uh, Lord, just live one more day. And, Lord, for you uh, just placing upon me the tremendous burden, uh, Lord, the blessed burden is what I call it, Father, of, Lord, uh, preaching and teaching your word. Lord, I've come short time after time, but I just... Thank you, Lord, for your mercy and grace. Father, I ask that, that that same mercy and grace, Lord, for the hearers of this word. Father, open their eyes, Lord. Let them search the text, Lord, like the Bereans, to see if what I say is so, Father. And if not, Lord, may they challenge it in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, saints, today is Lesson 6, July 10th. We're still in Unit 2, the word, the agent of creation. Never too far away, the devotional reading is 107th number of Psalms, verses 1 through 20. And the background scripture is John 4, 46 through 54. The print passage is John 4, 46 through 54. The key verse, so the father knew it was time, was at the same hour in which Jesus said unto him, thy son liveth, and him self believed, and his whole house. And before we get to the lesson aims, I just want to go back uh, one week, uh, this time to lesson five, um, and there was a reason for it all. And what we talked about there uh, with John chapter one, it says all things were created by him and for him and without him was not anything made that was made. And what we wanted to what I uh, wanted to uh, just pound home to you was the reason for it all is co just combining desperate. It seems like different parts, obviously, of the text to formulate a larger narrative from the mind of God in your discipleship process. For Because again, all things were made by him and for him and without him was not anything made that was made. John chapter one, but those other verses with that package of scripture says, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word was God. The same was also in the beginning with God. And that's identifying Jesus as God. And now there are people out there again, just, just, just from a defense of the gospel standpoint that say Jesus never... Uh, claim to be God. That that's that's not the truth. First of all, Sec, uh, you know, uh, this was a writer. Jesus didn't say this about himself, but this was a writer. But the Bible does say that all uh, Scripture is given by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. But I sit at the point out that even Jesus said, "Before Abraham was, I am." And when we connect that. Uh, what we find out is when Jesus just mentioning that connects him to the Exodus three account of the introduction uh, to Moses. And this was, I am that I am. Tell them I am essentials. what Moses and Exodus was supposed to go see the children of Israel further than that, right? We dig a little bit further. We know that Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the father. I am my father are one, right? I could go on with that dissertation. But when we talk about that or reason for it all, this is what we want to understand when we're de when in defense of the faith. And one of the lesson or the lesson names explore the meaning of the word uh, for the world, right? That word spoke the world into existence. Remember, how did God create? Was God out there with the axe and the shovel and a pick digging? Did, did the Bible say he snapped his fingers and some stuff happened like some witchcraft? Or man? No, the Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says he just spoke, and we know that the spoken word is identified in John chapter 1 as who? Yeshua or Jesus. Oh my gosh, this is getting big. Ne nevertheless, the world doesn't exist without the spoken word. And then, it, and then again, it said, find true inspiration, uh, uh, find true inspiration for life in Jesus. Again, he is life. Live in a relationship with the creator God because of the light that Jesus lives. That's the only way you can live in the light. The Bible says there's no one, there's no other name under heaven whereby we must be saved. The Bible, all, Jesus even said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Jesus also in the Gospel of John uh, says he, he's the door. I mean, he's that access uh, point to God. Jesus said this stuff himself. So when we talk about a reason for it all, it has to come back uh, to Yeshua because he is a creator. He identified himself as God. Here's this big idea that I want you to grab for people that struggle with that because I struggled with that for many years uh, because 
uh, again, I was a, uh, you know, when I was first saved, I was reading Jack Chick tracks, right? And Jack Trick, he's, he's a Baptist, but he presents Jesus through his gospel track ministry as God sitting in the center throne, Jesus sitting on the right, and then the Holy Spirit sitting on the left, these three beings. And even in this lesson plan, you know, it was like uh, it, it described or, or a week ago, the writer here described Jesus as the co-creator and that just could not be correct. It can't be correct because God said himself, uh, uh, Jesus said, I am my father are one. If you see me, you see the father in Old Testament. God said, I am God and God alone. Besides me, there is no other. This is a question um, not of three beings. It's a question of God's omnipresence. Right. So and I talked a little bit about that last week, but I'm, I'm going to save that. For another time, I don't want to get into that kind of defense of the gospel case there, right? But I did want to say this is that Jesus is God because the big idea I was talking to you about a reason for it all. The reason for it all uh, obviously began in uh, Isaiah 14, but Lucifer was cast down. God created Adam and Eve. Don't know why he chose to create them when he knew all the things that were going to happen were going to happen. I don't know why God did that. Nobody knows. Anybody tells you do, they're a liar and the truth's not in them because they're putting words in the mind, the mouth of God. And the Bible says, who has asked the question, who has been right top of my spirit here? Who has, who knows the mind of the Lord and who has been his counselor? So I said that to point out that God himself, only God, this is the big idea. Only God himself was enough to correct the eternal error brought through the words of Lucifer and the actions of Adam and Eve. Again, only God was an, himself was enough to correct the error and sin that began with Lucifer, came through Adam and Eve, and then manifests itself in the world. Oh, God is so righteous that he is the only, he was and is the only solution to what Lucifer and Adam and Eve did. That is the big idea of the Bible. Rewind that. Play it again and again. I just summed up the entire, from Revelation, or Genesis chapter 1 to Revelation chapter 22, I just sum that up in a couple of sentences for you by just by the revelation of the Holy Spirit. That, saints, is the reason for it all. And we go to today, uh, lesson 6, uh, July 10th, 2022, uh, never too far away. And again, the lesson, the, the key verse today is John 4, 53 says, So the fathers knew that it was at the same time in which Jesus said unto him, Thy son liveth, and himself believed, he and his whole house. The lesson aims today to understand the definition of the word faith and how Christ honors faithfulness. Except that faith in Christ strengthens the relationship between Christ and the believer. Trust Jesus by faith and action to do what we cannot do. The word faith kept coming up. Faith in Jesus. Uh, the word faith here. Except that faith in uh, Yeshua. And then trust Jesus by faith came up here. And I want to just make something very clear as well. I alluded to it. Uh, I think it was about a year ago. And I, I, I posted a video on a couple. Uh, maybe a couple of social media profiles. I know Facebook was one of them. YouTube uh, Sunday School students. And it caused this big stir. And uh, people, uh, more traditionalist uh, leaders, came out of the woodwork basically saying I was in error, but they couldn't tell me why I was in error, and I knew they wouldn't be able to. But the, the, the fact is that, again, there are seven I am statements in the Gospel of John made by Yeshua or Jesus. We just established that Jesus said he and God are one. We just talked about how Jesus was the creator that was in the beginning because God created by the word. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth and the earth was out form and darkness was on the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the waters. We talked about that. And the Bible says, and then he said, let there be light and God created through his word. Who is that word? According to God, John chapter one, that word is Yeshua. That word is God, right? In the beginning was the word, the words with God, the word was God. So that spoken word is what did the creation in the beginning. And Jesus said, I am my father's one. If you've seen the father, you've seen me. We could go on with that dissertation, but you understand, I don't want to patronize you here. But I said that to point out that Jesus said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I am the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Jesus said, I am the sheep door. Jesus said before Abraham was, I am, identifying himself as God. Again, I told you about that little exodus, exodus, exodus narrative, backed up by Jesus' statement, I am my Father, or one. So I, I said all that to point this out is that Jesus is faith. He is the word of faith, just like he is the way, the truth, the life. 
just like Jesus is the sacrificial lamb of God. He is. Jesus is the word. He is the life. He is the way. He is God. He is faith. And he is the word of faith. That becomes important because I, I, I've heard people say that Jesus had faith in God. And that could, that's, that, that's impossible for Jesus to have faith in God. The Bible does say he was faithful unto death. But in that context, what we're talking about, faithfulness means committed to a task. Because there are plenty of people that are faithful to a task, that are faithful in their marriage, that are faithful on their job, that are faithful to their church, but don't have faith in Jesus to make that faithfulness pay off after a while, right? So when we talk about faith, Jesus did not have faith. He wouldn't have needed faith. Because again, in the beginning was the word. The word was God. The word was God. If Jesus is God, why would he need faith in God? The Bible asks this question. The Bible, well, let's, let's say this. But first, the Bible says faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Jesus said, I am my father of one. He said, no one's seen the father any time except the son of man who comes out from heaven. Jesus said all of these things that he is God himself. So how could Jesus have faith if the definition of faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen? How could he have faith if he's God? Because obviously he's seen himself. I just told you how that could be possible because of omnipresence. Omnipresence describes the oneness doctrine, Pentecostal spout off, as well as Trinitarianism, 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 that others spout off. It's omnipresence. So I, I said that to point out that Jesus is faith. Jesus is God. So uh, obviously, if he's omnipresence, he's seen God, been in God's presence. Re the book, in a book of Revelation, you, we see that God is sitting on the throne and, and the Lamb of God is in front of the throne. How can he be sitting on the throne and be in front of the throne if Jesus is God at the same time? John chapter 1 says he is God. Omnipresence explains that. So Jesus didn't need faith as you and I need faith. Remember what Jesus told Thomas as well. You believe because you see. Blessed are those that don't see and believe. Thomas needed to see to believe. Thomas had faith, belief, because he saw. Why would Jesus need that same faith as Thomas if he is faith and if he is God and if he's seen, if he is God because him and his father are one and in the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word was God and he's the creator God from in the beginning and the Bible says, uh, the Bible talks about uh, faith being the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You wonder why Jesus could just speak stuff without fear and knowing it was going to happen because he is faith. He doesn't need faith because he is faith. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He is faith. He is the resurrection and the life. He is, you get what I'm saying there. That is doctrinal error. If somebody tells you that Jesus had faith. Please forward this to your teacher, preacher, pastor, whoever it is. And I would love to see the, the, their, their, their macro case for that. Again, a lot of them throw around scripture. And as Jesus told the Pharisees and the Sadducees, you do err in your understanding. Amen. The introduction, why is believing that Jesus Christ is the son of God essential? The apostle John answers this question, the stated purpose of this gospel account. The answer is that believing that he is God's son is a prerequisite for salvation, life eternal. Again, how could it be God and God's son at the same time? Omnipresence manifestation. Belief is a central theme of John's gospel and occurs in its web form, pesto belief. Approximately 100 times, its primary reference is to believe in uh, Jesus Christ for salvation. Believing in Jesus Christ is also critical because failure to do so leads to eternal condemnation. One of the chief sins is a refusal to believe God. Thus, without faith, it is impossible to believe God. That flat refusal to believe or accept God's uh, validity and authority without a particular demand of evidence will lead many to hell. Belief in Christ is a matter of faith. And just, it says, uh, is a matter of our faith. Remember, um, Jesus was in the grave three days, but um, we, we say that, that God raised Jesus up. But remember, Jesus said, I, lay, I laid out my life down again and I take it up. How is it possible that Jesus being dead could take up his life again if he was not God himself? In the flesh. Again, he could be present in heaven and he could be present on the earth. That's explained through omnipresence.
So I just want to be clear on that. Announcement of, of the biblical text, Desperate Hope, John 4, 46 through 50. So Jesus came again into Cana of Galilee, where he made the water wine. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he, had, when he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would not come down and, he, and heal his son. For he was at the point of death. Then said Jesus unto them, except you see sign and wonders, you will not believe. The nobleman said unto him, sir, come down here. Uh, my child died. Jesus said unto him, go thy way, the son liveth. And the man believed the word that uh, was spoken to him and he went his way. And I, I want to also add this. Jesus, uh, the, the, the Bible also says a wicked generation will seek after a sign and none will be given. Now they were, he was, you know, the Bible specifically talks about believers. I don't necessarily deal with stuff going outside the house of God necessarily and people not calling themselves believers or some of them call themselves Christians, whatever that means. But I, I said that to point this out, saints, is that when we talk about a wicked generation seek after a sign, none will be given. Uh, my heart certainly is heavy, uh, you know, for, for, for people in, in, in word of faith movements, as well as unfortunately, uh, our Pentecostal uh, brother, brethren um, that calls himself apostolic Pentecostals, uh, they, they won't believe and they believe because of, of, of signs and that it's OK uh, to, to believe when you see signs. But to require signs to believe is where it comes in. Wicked uh, wickedness comes in at, for instance, uh, tongues. The, the Bible talks about uh, being uh, baptized and and, 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 and baptized to the spirit and speaking in tongues. Dead Pentecostal the Bible talks about that. It's, 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 it's important um, to understand this is that, however, um, there are people that walk up and down aisles in Pentecostal churches, Kojic churches, they, they, they babble and they think that they're talking in tongues and what they're doing, really doing is mocking God. And really what they're doing is making themselves feel good. And the Bible says the same thing. The Bible says, you know, when that spirit drops, there has to be an interpreter of tongues. Because the Bible says, Paul said, if, if that, if that interpreter isn't there, the person who speaks in tongue edifies themselves. So basically you hear people blabbling, blabbling, blabbling. A lot of times I'm not mocking. I'm just telling you that they think they're pleasing God and what the spit they, this really dropped on them a lot of times. And they're doing that and they're actually mocking God. And that is why the Bible says many shall come unto me that day, Lord, come, uh, are going to come to me. Jesus said, saying, Lord, didn't I prophesy in your name? Didn't I cast out demons in your name? Didn't I do wonderful works in your name? He's going to say, depart from me. You that work iniquity. I never knew you. Part of the people going to think they was prophesying in tongues and they, and that's not what happened. So Jesus is saying here, that these people need, except you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. We have people that require signs and wonders even today, even to hold on to what little bit of faith that they have. And they're, they're stuck in these places saying, if I don't see it, you know, I got to see it. And it's interesting because what if Abraham, um, for, for those people that need signs, raising of the dead, tongues, whatever that stuff is, uh, what if, uh, what, what if Abraham would have required a sign to keep on walking in God, knowing that it took many years for his son Isaac to be born. Yeah, from time to time, God encouraged Abraham's heart. But I'm seeing that to point out, saints don't require what you think is a move of God in order to keep believing him. You can't pay for a move of God. You can't tithe and give offerings for a move of God. You cannot. And these people, all they're doing is playing you. They're, they're literally in, 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 in using Jesus's name to do it, not in Jesus name. They're making you God's people into prostitutes. This is what they're doing, right? You think that you, people think the spirits dropped in a service. And a lot of times all people are doing is having an emotional experience, like crying and how like crying when they see a movie. And that's not the same thing. So don't require a sign as you believe it, because what if that sign that God gives you is that you wake up to see one more sunny day? What if the sign that God gives you is, yeah, your lights are cut off, but some money showed up. Yeah, you got to pay a little late fee. Some money kind of showed up out of nowhere after the fact. What if that's the sign? What if the sign is that God is sending is with you by sending you through suffering like he sent Job through suffering? A lot of y'all looking for a sign from God to heal you because you've been told that and preach that that garbage to you. When the sign is that God put the sickness on you in the beginning for you to still praise his holy name and live that in front of people. We have a couple of sisters here. Uh, one went on to be in glory, man, that that were that that walked with Jesus through their suffering. One still here 
And man, they are glorifying God in their suffering. And I'm encouraged not because they were healed, but because they're suffering. And they're saying, I love the Lord because he heard my cry and he pities every groan. God's thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are his ways your ways. God's grace and mercy might be taking everything you have to show you that he's still God and he's going to bring you through. Don't get caught up in the signs and the wonders ministry, because even if it doesn't happen, God is still able. Don't let these denominations trick you into thinking because you do X, Y, and Z that you're truly saved. You are saved because you believe according to Jesus himself. It is simple belief that brings salvation. It's not believing in Jesus plus these other works. Remember, that's what Paul or these signs and wonders. That's what Paul was dealing with. Even when he's talk, uh, dealing with Judaizing. Hey, you can believe in Jesus, but you got to be circumcised. You got to follow law. You got to do all these other things. Be careful with that and just believe. Take God at his word through Jesus Christ. After his requested two day ministry in Samaria, Jesus and his disciples arrived in Galilee. John quoted Jesus as saying that a prophet has no honor in his own country as a precursor to the rejection that Jesus would receive among his own people. His reception by the Galileans was not one of belief leading to faith in him, but only as a miracle worker. They witnessed his miracles in Jerusalem during the Passover and were anticipating more for the sake of curiosity. John increases the irony by adding verse 45, by adding the fact that Jesus had recently performed a miracle in Cana of Galilee. Instead of responding in belief, those Galileans only desire more miracles. Again, you require a sign and a wonder for you to believe. I would challenge whether you uh, had faith in Jesus at all. And I say that uh, because uh, Jesus is not a vending machine where you just put some, put your money in, which could be a prayer. You press A1 or A5, whatever that is that you want to come out of that vending machine and something drops, you pick it up and eat it. It's not like that. He's not your own little heavenly genie that you rub and then you get, you get him to show up and he grants you three wishes. Those things that you are praying for, remember, Jesus said, ask anything in my name and it will be given. But in order for those things to be in his name, it has to be according to his will. Would you believe me if I told you prayers are answered when your prayer aligns with God's will for your life? That's the only time that prayer is going to be answered. You praying for a bunch of stuff that God is not going to do. You are praying for miracles that ain't going to happen because God is understanding that a wicked generation will seek after a sign and none will be given. And because of our text here to say you require a sign to believe again, what is a sign? A sign is that Jesus woke you up this morning, as old folks said, and closed you in your right mind. As an old lady once said too, and comedy picked it up, girl, he slid me clean. Jesus clean, slid me clean in my house shoes, right? So I'm saying, saints of God, you need to reevaluate what a miracle really is. We, we talked about that because a lot of people don't even know how to define what a miracle is. A miracle is simply a supernatural occurrence that's not yet explainable by technology and science. That's what a supernatural miracle is. He, the, the Bible talks about, uh, we, God told this prophet, you look for me in the, the wind and I was not there. You look for me in the earthquake, I was not there. And that he showed up in a still small voice, right? And that is where the miracle is. A miracle of God could be that he is encouraging you on in a still small voice because that still small voice is not scientifically explainable. It's supernatural. Thereby, it is classified really a miracle. God does miracles all the time. You just need to look around. What do you think? How do desperate situations often cause lapses in faith? Do believers require signs and wonders to acknowledge Jesus' power? Yeah, most believers do uh, require signs and wonders um, because if God, if, if Jesus doesn't give us what we want, oh boy, it's on then. Lord, I'm, I, I'm believing you still God. In, in, in saying that, you are trying to convince yourself that you believe in he's still God, even though he didn't do it. Uh, John 4, uh, 4, 51 through 54 uh, says, And then be, while he was still on the way, his servants met him with the news that the boy was living. When he inquired as to the time when his son got better, they said, Yesterday at one in the afternoon, the fever left him. Then the father realized that it was the exact time uh, which Jesus had said to him, Your son will live. And he said, 
uh, and he and his whole household believe. This was the second sign Jesus performed after coming uh, from Judea to Galilee. And what do you think? What personal evidence have you experienced that proves that Jesus' power transcends time and space? We've all, we all kind of had those same moments. And what's interesting, saints, is that uh, God is really on the quantum level. And when I say quantum, I'm talking about uh, that, that atomic level that obviously we cannot see. And that's millions of times smaller than anything we could see. Because again, if he's God, if he's created all things, he created all things through a process. God is uh, a God of process. He creates things through his spoken word using process. Now, whether that's atoms, nucleus, DNA, Clay, whatever that thing is he's using to create, he's using it to create. And that's what we have to understand. And that's how we know he transcends time and space is because because Jesus uh, as God, when Jesus showed up, he was doing things. He obviously controlled gravity at least twice that we know of uh, during the storm in the sea, walking towards his disciples. The other is in the book of Acts when he uh, got up and, uh, and he ascended up before their very eyes, according to their testimony. So he obviously could control that. He obviously could literally control life on a quantum or atomic scale because when he spoke that word, uh, this in our text here today, this uh, his son lived and Jesus wasn't even in the place like he was uh, with the little girl. When, when he said young maid, uh, Talakumi, when he's told the young maid arise, Jesus was there. And he spoke those words there. But in this example, Jesus was somewhere way away and he still spoke that word. And somehow that word was still accurate. What that means for you and I is that wherever he is, he can speak the word and people live again. He speak that word. People lay down and die. And wherever you are, when you are speaking the word of truth and when you release that prayer, if it's in his name, remember what we said, prayers answer when your prayer aligns with his will. When that it's time and space does not matter. You don't necessarily need to be with somebody to lay hands on them if you have that gifting. And that is a gifting for people to be healed. You don't necessarily need to be in somebody's presence to pray for them. You can pray for them wherever they are. Because again, time and space does not matter to God. That statement that he made to Moses, I am that I am. Tell them I am has sent you. No other where, other place in the biblical record can I find anyway that God is, uh, uh, describes his eternalness so succinctly as I am that I am. That's the definition of eternity. Eternity's definition, eternity means forever. I am because God is eternity. God is, remember that word of faith. God is faith. God is you get what I'm saying. So saints, when we talk about that, your prayers transcend time and space. You you use amen to close prayers. But actually, when, when we talk about amen, amen doesn't isn't the close of anything. When you say amen, you're saying so be it. So it's actually the beginning of that faith word being honored by God. Yeah. And a closing thought. The first two of Jesus's miracles in Cana led people to trust him as disciples and a royal official in his entire household. This applicable lesson for believers transcends merely affirming who God is, but also confirms the necessity of maintaining uh, confident faith in him despite circumstances for true believers. Believing is seeing rather than seeing is believing. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for this lesson on today. Uh, Father, I just thank you, Lord, um, Lord, that you transcend time and space, that your eternalness, uh, Lord, just speaks to us and it keeps us in all things. Father, I just ask, Lord, that you continue, Lord, to, Lord, just show me and reveal your word to me, Lord, and through me, uh, Lord, through through uh, me and your uh, through your Holy Spirit, through me anyway, Lord, through your people here. Father, I just pray for the subscriber here, the hearer here, Lord, that all things, Lord, that they pray in your name, Lord, will be answered. But Lord, teach us how to pray, Father, and what it is that we should pray for in Jesus' name. Amen. And so be it. And if you've made it this far, please subscribe. Uh, to this channel. And don't forget uh, to click in the description section below and download uh, pastoral, my pastoral sermon notes. I have 200, 230, whatever that number is, 600 pages of documentation. You can download whatever you want to support uh, our micro church here, our ministry here. So be it.